Welcome back to JG Garage. In this video, I'll show you how to fix your Mazda oil leak that is leaking from your oil cooler by installing the updated Japanese oil cooler, and how to install the spin-on oil filter conversion housing. First, jack up the car and use the jack stand for safety. I'm only jacking up the driver's side, but it'll be easier if you jack up both sides. You'll know when you have an oil leak when you have oil on the ground and around this hole opening, which is right below the oil filter. I laid a tarp and some cardboard underneath to catch any oil that might spill or splash. Now we need to remove the splash shield which is held by a total of 6 10mm screws in this plastic clip. Four of the screws are on the back side with two on each side. Now we can see the oil filter housing, and it's clear that the oil leak is coming from here. You can see that it's leaking from above the filter housing, which indicates that the leak is coming from the oil cooler gasket, which commonly fails. The current gasket has only been installed for 3 years, so I definitely need to just upgrade the oil cooler. Here is a splash shield which now needs to be cleaned. To remove the oil filter housing, we need to remove this oil pressure sensor, this coolant line, and that coolant line, and the 4 bolts holding the filter housing. There's 2 on this side, and 2 on the other side. I'm going to start by removing the oil cap so we can start draining the oil. Use a 17mm socket to remove the drain plug. Once the oil has drained, clean the drain plug and replace with a new washer. Now use an allen wrench to remove the oil filter plug and let the oil drain. I'm using a 76mm 14 flute oil filter socket to remove the oil filter cap. There will be more oil inside so carefully flip it over. This is the cartridge oil filter. I'm going to screw on the cap for now to catch any oil that might drip when I remove the housing from the engine. Now it's time to remove this coolant hose. Use some pliers to remove the clamp. The hose will most likely be stuck and be very difficult to remove, so I used a flathead to loosen the edges and I sprayed some WD-40 to help it slide off. There will be some coolant so make sure you have a bucket ready. Now I'm going to remove the oil pressure sensor. I'm not sure what size it is but I didn't have a wrench big enough for it so I just used an adjustable wrench. You can unplug it instead if you can. I couldn't because it was all gunked up.
Once it's removed, just set it aside so it's not in the way. Here are the 10 millimeter bolts on the driver's side that we need to remove. And here are the other two bolts we need to remove on the other side. You will need at least a 3 inch extension or longer to remove the bolts. Once the bolts are removed, the filter housing should come right off. Mine is stuck because the last time I replaced just the oil cooler gasket, I added RTV between the housing and the engine block, which I shouldn't have done. So I'm using a mallet to break off the RTV gasket. Now that the oil filter housing is off, we now have room to remove the other coolant hose. So again, use pliers to remove the clamp and use a flathead to carefully loosen the edges of the hose. and spray WD-40 to lubricate the hose, allowing it to slide off. Be careful not to puncture or rip the coolant hose. There will be leftover coolant inside, so drain it into the bucket. The old metal gasket is still stuck on the engine block because of the RTV. I don't recommend that you use RTV gasket upon installation. I saw someone on YouTube use it, so I thought I had to, but the metal gasket is sufficient. Now to clean the surface thoroughly, removing all the old RTV gasket. I had to use a blade to carefully clean the surface, making sure not to scratch or gouge the surface. Once the surface is smooth, I'm going to use brake parts cleaner to clean and wipe the surface. Now I'm going to unplug the oil pressure sensor from the connector using a flathead to push down the locking tab and to clean it thoroughly. I'm going to be replacing the old clamps with the screw clamps I bought from Walmart since I find them easier to work with. I actually recommend buying this kit instead which is also from Walmart since the clamp width is wider. Before installing the parts together, I just want to clean the new oil filter conversion housing with brake parts cleaner to make sure it's nice and clean. As you can see, the updated gasket looks very different from the original gasket which fails over time. So to install the new oil cooler onto the filter housing, you have to align this tab inside the notch on the housing. And this tab towards the center and not in this notch like you think it would. Now it's time to screw on the new bolt which I should mention is not the same bolt as the old one. It's a completely different bolt. Make sure the oil cooler is aligned correctly and tighten down the bolt. This is a 15 millimeter socket. The torque spec is 26 to 29 foot pounds and I just set my torque wrench to 27 foot pounds. The best way to torque down the bolt is to lay the flat side of the housing down on the ground and hold it down with your right hand as you torque it with your left hand. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the old and new setup. The filter used to go inside of here and now the filter is a screw-on filter. This is the old cooler made by Ford and I just changed the gasket only 3 years ago and it failed again. It was only $13 so I thought that was the best option, but really the best way is to upgrade to the Japanese Mazda oil cooler. 
This updated OEM Mazda oil cooler I bought from an eBay seller that sells the complete package. The oil cooler, gasket, metal gasket, and new bolt. The seller also offers a lifetime warranty on the seal as well. This OEM Mazda oil filter conversion housing I bought from Amazon for around $80. Now you don't need to get this to install the new oil cooler. You can still install this oil cooler on here. I just figured since I'm taking it out, I might as well convert it since I do prefer a spin-on filter. Between the two units, this one is much lighter than this one, which is really heavy. I do want to make it clear that if you just buy the updated oil cooler, you also need to buy the new bolt as you can't use the old one. You can reuse the four housing bolts, but I recommend buying new ones from Mazda as it tends to stretch when actually over tightening, which happened to me last time and I broke a bolt in the engine block which I had to weld the nut to take out. This is the new metal gasket which goes on here. Like I said earlier, no need to use RTB gasket. This corner has these tabs so when you screw in the bolt, the gasket stays in place. So I'm going to clean the bolts as well. I'm not going to be replacing them since they're fairly new from the last time I did this and I made sure I didn't over tighten them so they should still be fine. Here are the four bolts now nice and clean. Before installing it back, I'm just going to clean the surface one more time. So I noticed that there's two small pits, most likely from the last time when I was trying to remove the broken bolt and accidentally hit the surface. In this case, I'll put a little RTB gasket maker to fill in the two pits, just to make sure I don't have any leak. Now, I'm going to put the clamp on the coolant hose and slide the oil cooler until the hose hits the raised lip. I'm going to start bolting on the top left which is where the metal gasket has those tabs I mentioned earlier to keep it in place. Now you want to tighten the bolts in a cross pattern. I'm actually not sure what the torque specs are for these four bolts since I couldn't find it in the service manual. And people say different specs on the online forums, so if you know the actual torque spec, please comment it down below. I'm going to use a short ratchet and tighten it by feel. Now I'm going to put on the last coolant hose. Now I'm going to screw in the oil pressure sensor that is now clean.
I'm just going to tighten it enough and I'll check for leaks later on. Don't forget to plug in the connector. Clean the oil filter housing before screwing on the new filter. Remember to lube the o-ring of the new oil filter, which I already did. The filter I'm using is the Motorcraft FL910S, which I found out is the same as the OEM Mazda filter, just relabeled and much cheaper, around $4. Of course, you can use any filter you'd like. Okay, we are done, so just double check everything is good before adding the fluids. Since some coolant was lost, we need to top off the coolant reservoir. This is already my pre-mixed coolant from Peak. If you want to watch my coolant flush video, click the card on the top right. Now I'm going to fill up the oil. I'm using Shell Rotella T6 and the oil capacity is about 5.5 quarts. So it is now the next day and I'm just checking for any leaks. The oil filter has no leak. The oil pressure sensor has no leak. No coolant leak. And no leaks around the oil filter housing. Now just reinstall the splash shield, check the coolant level and oil level, and everything should be good to go. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, give this video a like, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.